so much. Thank you so much, every child. Okay, and thank you so much, everybody. You stay here all day long. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fortunately, this is the last um, presentation, so please pay attention uh, to the end. So, and I, yeah, I want to everybody happy uh, if you see my um, presentation. So the topic is, what is the art of the uh, anytime learning? Now we have uh, uh, around 15, 15 um, long-term results of, of anytime learning. So uh, I want to share with you. So please enjoy uh, my cases. The first thing is anytime loading in the maxillary posterior area, which nobody wants to do. But Galini uh, show us the basic uh, concept how to do the loading in the posterior maxilla. So due to the uh, CMI implant and SCA and SCA S streamer, so you can get the good fixation in the posterior maxilla. So I have a case in a four-week loading in the posterior uh, maxilla sinus area. Uh, the first case here, uh, here, two, uh, two the teeth will be extracted. We have a five millimeter, um, seven millimeter uh, long and eight millimeter wide uh, existing bone. We need uh, uh, some bone graft. But this is class three uh, CM, CMI, CM fixation. So we'll place uh, five to 10 millimeter uh, CM I, IS2 active implants. So we're using s reamer okay? Okay, go into the sinus, we do the bone graft, and placing implant in the extraction socket, we get uh, uh, around 32, 35 to 42 centimeters, okay, as you see here. So now uh, we did the uh, four-week loading with the provisional restoration. As you see here, I truly do uh, uh, loading, uh, not function, okay? Occlusion function, uh, we did. Uh, for, uh, the final restoration uh, was done in six months, as you see here, like this. And the five-year follow-up is perfectly maintained. So we did four-week loading in the posterior maxilla, but we have a good result. Okay, this is another case, uh, two-week loading, okay, in six millimeter remaining bone in the sinus area, with definitive processes, which means final processes in two weeks. In this case, um, we have a Existing bone is six millimeter, six, eight millimeter bone. And we're gonna place a short implant, which is five by seven, five by seven, five by 8.5. And the other areas, we have only uh, two, two millimeter short um, existing bone. So we have to wait at least six months. So patient has to chew only that side I'm using also CMI implant and SSA technique. As you see here, we get the fixation in the, in the um, inferior cortical wall of the sinus. So now we get the fixation in 35, 45, 40, 45 Newton centimeters. So we make uh, impression in one week and uh, deliver the final restoration in two weeks, as you see there, and we do the uh, fully uh, occlusion, okay? Perfect, because of the final restoration in, in two weeks. It was 2007, okay? On the other side, patient cannot chew nine years later, okay? It's perfectly maintained. 14 years later, perfectly maintained. Okay, uh, now we have a um, randomized control clinical trial uh, published in uh, COIR, COIR in um, 2016, and we compare um, both CMI implant and the Strawman 
uh, straight body at the time, uh, still active. At the time, the strawman doesn't have taper body. And we place two implants in, in one side, okay? And loading in the four weeks with the provisional restoration. Okay, everybody knows we, uh, we're gonna be using S SCA uh, techniques, you know, to get the good fixation. But uh, you know, there's no problem with the neobiotic CMI implant because it's easy to place. But how about the Strauman uh, straight body? We had a hard time to place implant, you know, to get the good fixation. So we need to do osteotome technique you know, to get 30 newtons, very matters. Eventually, um, as you see here, the, there was no stability there until four weeks. So we do the loading on the four weeks with the provisional restoration. And after six weeks, we change to the final restoration. The result was the both group has a 100% success because, you know, we did a good job. And uh, bone loss, uh, we have a very minimal bone loss, uh, both, both implants. The five-year result of uh, maxillary sinus area, class one, class two, class three, class four. Okay, uh, we have a, a very, very few failure, uh, so we got a 99% success rate in the posterior maxilla. How about the immediate loading or early loading in the sinus area? Of course, we don't do the immediate early loading in the class four case. In class one, two, three, three, you know, uh, we have a great, um, great success rate, over 98%. So let's move into the immediate loading in the extraction socket with the CMI implants. In the uh, anterior regions, as you see, uh, after extract, but in this case, I using this um, socket shell technique to get the fixation in the C, C fixation, okay? As you see here, just remaining the uh, root on the buccal side, and placing implants, we get uh, 40 newton centimeters with uh, 78 ISD, ISD value, due to the root, root shell. And final impression was made um, right after place, placement, and the temporary crown attached the uh, adjacent tip. After, after one week, or no, no, one month after implant placement, the final zirconia crown was delivered. So from one year to 12 year, okay, is perfectly maintained. A placement and one month later and 12 years later, okay, and another case in the uh, maxillary anterior teeth, the one teeth here is moving, as you see here, is moved uh, left, labial side, we have to, uh, remove that, uh, that tooth, replace uh, one implant, CMI, uh, in the D022 with the 40 newton centimeters. You can see the video here. So after they extract the tooth, they remove the soft, soft tissue, and the drill uh, into the extraction socket and they just feel the bone density, you know, and uh, get the strategy of how to uh, drill in, in the socket and placing uh, implants to get to 40 newton centimeters, you know, for the, for the immediate loading. So we got uh, uh, around 40 newtons, okay? So uh, we filled with uh, some bone at, uh, in the extraction socket and attach the um, temporary crown, crown on it. And uh, immediately loaded with the provisional restoration uh, 
on that implant. Okay, so maybe we need some um, soft tissue graft, so we go to the palatal side, get the very little uh, tidal uh, soft tissue. Okay, and then uh, to adding to the label side of uh, here. It's not necessary, but uh, to get the uh, better result, I just um, soft tissue management on, on the labial side and then deliver the provisional restoration uh, just right after the place implant. So this is the same day of surgery. Um, you see the uh, labial, um, I mean, uh, gingival margin area, you know, uh, from, from here to here, okay, in two, two weeks later, and after in four months, we changed to the zirconia crown. And this is after surgery, and uh, 11 years later, follow up, you know, it is still perfectly maintained without any uh, soft tissue um, um, uh, change. Okay, let's move into the uh, immediate loading in the extraction socket on the, on the uh, posterior area, like, like a molar area. So here, in one case here, we have to remove it. So using the guide, uh, we place it uh, drilling. I felt about the D22 uh, bone. So I did the full tap because of D222 and then placing implant, uh, so I write down a D2 B, uh, BDL, which means, you know, we contact the implant to the vocal side and the distal side and lingual side. So uh, we can write down like this with uh, 35 Newton centimeters. Okay, but it's not necessary uh, to deliver the provisional restoration right after place implant, but we can do it. So with the provisional restoration, crown, okay, I fully load it. It's very dangerous, but you know, I can do it. Okay, uh, in three months, uh, definitely the crown is delivered. As I want to show the uh, long term, it's a two year follow up, that's still good. Seven year, okay, so we can uh, just take a look. So. I think there, there's no difference, you know, uh, delayed loading or conventional loading or immediate loading. The result is the same. So five-year result, immediate placement with the IS2 active. So, you know, uh, anterior, posterior, ma maxilla, is almost same, okay? Over nine, 98%. The current design, uh, as I show you in the morning, uh, what's the difference from uh, IS2 and IS3? I uh, just uh, uh, review again the difference. So I, I already show you the, what's the indication of IS2 and IS3. Uh, you can choose one of them as so. well. But this is IS3, um, animal study, okay, shows you know, uh, no stability dip, okay, with a good uh, also intervention. Uh, some one group is using the cortical drill, we make a space here, but after four weeks, it's filled with. So in that case, just for conventional loading. But the, for the immediate loading, so we're using the cortical tab, as you see here, so there's no space in the cortical bone area so we can bear the occlusal load, right? So we can do uh, everything. So we place, uh, so if it's a hard bone, we need uh, pre-tapping like this and place implants. So two years later. In another case, you know, this is a soft tissue, little soft tissue management. 
to um, preserve the attached change by here, okay? So just uh, make a small incision like, like this, oblique incision. So you get, we get a good um, um, healing of the soft tissue. Then finally in one and five months, the final restoration was delivered. So five-year success rate, you know, still very high. So there's no difference between IS-2 and IS-3. Immediate loading or early loading or conventional loading, you know, almost the same, but, you know, conventional loading, you know, shows a little bit, you know, lower uh, success rate than the immediate loading. Why? Because, you know, conventional loading, you know, sometimes, you know, we do the, um, uh, GBR, you know, and uh, uh, immediate placement like that, so it's, it's not predictable, right? So sometimes it, uh, we have a, a more failure than the immediate uh, limited loading. Okay, let's move into, why not using the um, tissue level implant like uh, IT, IT eyes, uh, like this. Actually, you know, there's, there is uh, some um, <coughs> um, um, somebody doesn't like that because, you know, it's not aesthetic, it's mostly uh, the cement type uh, and it's not retrievable because the cement retained and um, um, difficult to get ideal initial stability because, you know, uh, the conventional ITI system is a very weak uh, stability. So this is the general bias of uh, uh, t tissue level implant, but we have uh, tissue level implants, which I like uh, most in the uh, placing in the posterior maxilla, posterior area. So what was the difference, you know, is the bone level implant and the tissue level implants. As you see here, this is a bone level, but uh, moving to the uh, tissue level implant, you know, uh, we already provide biological width. So we show the uh, very little uh, bone loss, you know, without any uh, too much bone loss. So I like it very much in the posterior, posterior area. Uh, it's especially, especially, you know, when we have a very thin bone like this, you know, we expose the uh, implant like this. And also the, um, the level of the bone is different from here and here. So in that case, you know, IT, um, it's much, much better uh, in this case. In the extraction socket, the bone level is here and here is different. So in that case, it's good, very convenient to use the uh, tissue level IT system, the same. In that case, also is a big difference uh, here and here is bone level. So we place two implants, you know, so one is using uh, ITI and Neo IT system like this. So you see, you see the bone uh, between the implant is maintained here and here, even though the um, margin is different. So I like it very much using that uh, kind of um, I tissue level implant. And also the prosthetic part, we provide the two piece abutments uh, for um, IT case like this. Uh, rather than the solid abutment. So, you know, it can be taken out, you know, because we have the I SCRP multi-unit ab abutment, which means, you know, we have a half um, octa system so that we can take it out, you know, all the bridge are bridge out, uh, even though the, um, the angle is different. Uh, so it's the same, so we can take it out because uh, there's a hole there. And another case, uh, in the extraction socket, we place three implants, and then the uh, final restoration. Look at this, you know, how uh, aesthetic it is. Even though we use a tissue level implant, it's, it's perfectly uh, aesthetic. Six years. The bone level is, you know, maintained. Oh, uh, suddenly, you know, it's overgrowing. So I like it very much to using the um, 
the tissue level implant, especially in the posterior area. Okay, let's move into the immediate loading in the fully dentous area. Um, Dr. Dr. Uh, Richard Lee already showed us uh, how to manage the full arch uh, medial loading. So I, I was a very crazy guy, you know, at that time in two, 2007, I did the full arch in a day from implant placement to the definitive prosthesis. What does that mean? So, you know, final restoration already made before I place implants. Can you imagine that? So, right after place implants, okay, the final restoration is ready. And then I just deliver it. So, one day you finish. Okay, this is the case here. So, full arch in a day. From implant placement to the definitive processes from here to here. Okay, I will show you. This is the case, an upper and lower. Okay, I placed uh, upper first and do the, um, the early loading or uh, one loading. And then the, uh, the lower is ready to do the um, uh, one day loading with the provisional restoration. So very precise guide should be made. to get the passive fit, all right? The six months later, it's 10 years later, it's perfectly maintained. Okay, let's move into another case here, you know, replace the things uh, with the guide, okay? Made the provisional restoration like this, and after the place implants, it's uh, nothing special, so uh, we place the um, custom abutment and the provisional restoration on it. And the definite processes within four months, okay, like this, five years, perfectly maintained. Okay, moving to the full, uh, full mouse rehabilitation by immediate loading, okay, like this. The lower is uh, fully dangerous, dangerous. Okay, so I place that many implants in the, in the mandible. Why? Because the patient was very rich, very rich, a lot of money. Uh, because uh, I'm not get afraid to, you know, fail some of implants. No, patient have a lot of money, so why not? Okay, so I uh, made a provisional restoration, you know, we can, we can make an impression anytime, one week, two weeks, three weeks, it's up to you guys. And the lower, um, we made a, a guide system and place uh, 11 implants in 30 minutes, finish. Okay, yeah, we can do the loading uh, at the same day or just next day or one, one week later. Uh, two months, and okay, we changed the final restoration. Okay, day of delivery, and eight year uh, follow up. Okay, let's move into the uh, bottle guide, uh, which is somebody already know that. 
because we developed the water wide, you know, we can make the guide in, in the chair, chair side milling machine, okay, uh, in 15 minutes, we can make a guide. I placed an implant in my mouth by myself with water guide. Why? Because I really want to show it, everybody how accurate water guide is. So this is the uh, live surgery in front of 1,000 uh, foreign uh, dentists in Seoul, uh, 2019. Uh, placing one implant here, okay, posterior maxilla for smaller area. I suddenly decided to do uh, the surgery by myself. So we show uh, how to make the guide from, from the start to the end, okay? So the guide was made in uh, 15 minutes, you know, and then everything is ready, okay, for the, for the surgery. So I just see here, uh, it's me, yeah, it's so really me. <laughs> I drill yeah. by myself. I'm not, I'm not lying, okay? But in the posterior maxilla, how can I see uh, this? You know, in the mirror, 아니라, I, you know, I try to drill. Uh, it's crazy. 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 It's so um, that's the planning, and that's the reality. Uh, the result is the same. So we do, I did, uh, we did the uh, bone graft, so we get um, class three CM, CMI fixation, or class two. So right after the uh, placing implant, uh, we deliver the provisional restoration in 30 minutes. So 1,000 dentists are waiting for me Okay, this is symposium like this. And then one month later, final recording in two months. Hello everybody, I'm in the clinic. Okay, and um, it's, been, it's been three years since I have implant uh, by myself, uh, three years ago. And um, everybody who watching my live, live surgery, uh, very curious uh, what happened in my mouth, my implant. So I'll, I want to show you here uh, right now um, what happened uh, my my implant. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, so I want to show you the, uh, with the, with the X-ray. Okay. What's the result uh, after four years? Okay. okay. Please take X-ray. All right. Okay, we will see the uh, three-year result of the, uh, my nice. implant here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we years. can see almost no bone loss. Uh. Okay, this is the four-year, four-year later. So that's the reality of uh, any time loading. Okay, uh, with the bottle guide in the full arch uh, on the sinus area with, the, with the six, million, uh, six implants, and IT, uh, tissue level implant with the bottle guide, full arch, okay? And make, uh, make a planning and place impl six implants uh, in short time uh, with, uh, you know, um, a graft. In two weeks, the provision restoration was delivered. And the final restoration um, in any time, in the five years later, you know, it works very well. Okay, so what's next? Okay, it's almost the end of my presentation. Okay, I'm always thinking about the solution for zero failure. So many things happen, complications. Screw fracture, implant fracture, you know, screw loosening, everything's a core. 
what will be the future implant uh, suitable for? Maybe we need anytime, anytime loading, uh, even in the D3, D4 bone. And also uh, zero marginal bone loss. We really want. And no GBL needed on the very narrow, narrow bone, bone reach. And, and also it's very easy, easy for family surgery. Everybody wants to do that, right? So what kind of implant can, uh, can match to, the, uh, to these uh, conditions? I don't know. I'm not sure it's just one thing you know, like this. How do you like this? Okay, we have a short implants, a small core, but the big and very deep thread like this, okay? And never move. You like that? And about uh, um, the soft tissue of failure, like uh, uh, this from the uh, uh, from the uh, excess cement, uh, uh. like this. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of problem with uh, excess cement like this. So maybe you know we hate to use cement in the mouth. And also the screw core on the uh, cooler surface uh. is good for retrievability. But you know, what if if we have uh, more than five implants, five screw holes? How do how do you manage that? You know, it takes about one hour to take it out. So, so without removing the prosthesis, just you know, we, we try the cleaning, you know, in the mouth. So. What will be the future implant prosthesis? Maybe screws, but detachable. Do you think is it possible? Or cementless? Like this? We can easily take it out and put it in and take it out. It never fell down, you know, if the patient doesn't want. If, if the doctor wants to uh, remove it, it can be easily uh, removed. So this, I'm, we, we are d uh, dreaming to having this kind of uh, solutions. static to deliver um, within 15 minutes, within 15 minutes. So after one, one month, yes, you know, we can uh, take it out for the... Uh. Okay, just by a uh, little bit tapping like this, you know, we can take it out, like a... Uh, um, the full arch, you can use a YK link like this, okay, the no screw at all uh, and the occlusion surface. So this is reference. So that's uh, how I lived so far. And then, you know, the results, you know, 
and uh, we have a lot of um, um, things like that. So now is always now, always new, right? Never stop challenging and think endless and create solution. This is uh, our um, fact, our office, uh, Neo Biotech company. Uh, hopefully, uh, we invite you, everybody, uh, come to uh, our uh, Neo Biotech. Everybody likes me. Thank you so much for attention. Thank you.